I set myself a challenge at the end of 2023. I wanted to platinum 26 PS3 games, one for each letter of the alphabet. So far, we've beaten Assassin's Creed 2 and Star Wars The Force Unleashed. So next up, we're tackling the letter I and the game Infamous. Infamous is an action adventure game developed by Sucker Punch Productions and released in 2009. Many consider this series to be one of the most underrated PlayStation exclusives. And platinum for Infamous is simple, but a bit more challenging than our previous game and is split up into six sections one complete the story with a good karma rating two complete the game with a bad karma rating three complete the game on the hardest difficulty four complete all combat related trophies five find all collectibles and six clean up any remainder playstationtrophies.org give the platinum trophy difficulty a 5 out of 10 and an approximate completion time of 26 to 35 hours with that out of the way let's begin the game we start off with a cutscene a huge explosion rocks the foundation of a city and people are running as the camera pans to a helicopter you witness a blue electrical explosion expanding and engulfing a cityscape before a vehicle flies towards the camera you witness a man waking from the center of the explosion. This is Cole, who miraculously has survived this brutal explosion. As you, the player, become familiar with the controls of the game, we make our way through an abandoned and damaged parking lot, we are electrocuted by a junction box nearby. Instead of succumbing to the electrical power, Cole seems to absorb it. As we make it to the bridge to evacuate the area, more electrical energy is absorbed into Cole's body, but this time a chain reaction occurs where lightning strikes all around around him, damaging nearby emergency vehicles in the process. As Cole makes it to the end of the bridge, he collapses into a deep coma. A cutscene follows which helps us, the gamer, understand the events of what we just witnessed. The explosion moments ago has rocked the city, destroying buildings and killing thousands in the process. Disease and famine have plagued the city as rioting has become the norm. Evil organisations have rose to power and the government have sealed off the city in a desperate attempt to stop the biological threat. Civilization, as we know it is crumbling and people are left to fend for themselves. Police have either abandoned their posts or lost their lives in the pursuit of justice with gangs controlling the city. As Cole awakens from the coma, he becomes overwhelmed by an electrical power resonating within inside him. We take back control of Cole 14 days after the explosion and after learning some basic mechanics of shooting, we watch a military airship drop some foods and medical supplies into the city. Knowing these supplies won't last long, Cole and Zeke head to the drop-off location to find these supplies. As we arrive to find the supplies, they are lodged up on a structure in the middle of a park. At this point, we learn the fundamentals of climbing as we ascend the structure and dislodge the supplies. As they hit the ground, we meet one of the first gangs that Cole will face on his journey, the Reapers. The gang who control the Neon District will stop at nothing to expand their control and suppress the weak. Here, we experience our first taste of combat shooting electrical bolts and pulses towards the enemy and taking them out for good once this is done we are graced with the first of many morality decisions that will affect the world and cole himself we have a choice share the supplies with the civilians who have been starving for days or keep them for ourselves naturally as this is my first playthrough we chose to go for the good karma route and share the wealth with others around us this is where we receive our first trophy good eats before choosing to give the people in food instead of hoarding it for ourselves surely after after this I obtained the second trophy in the game, Stuntman, for completing my first stunt in the game. After this we're graced with a mini cutscene where a TV host brandishes Cole a terrorist, so we decide it's time to get out of the city. As we arrive we find a group of people protesting at the entrance of a bridge and armed officers preventing civilians from using that bridge. Another karma choice presents itself to us. Do we take down the armed guards on our own and avoid civilian casualties or do we shoot from within the crowd and incite a a riot. Naturally, we're taking the good karma route this time, so we take the guards out on our own. This is where the next trophy pops, good riot. Following this, we escort all the civilians across the bridge, where everyone are engulfed by a sea of bullets, as the military uses deadly force to prevent people from escaping the city. Cole dives out of the way and into an adjacent decontamination unit, where he is greeted by a female federal agent named Moira. She was requesting Cole's help locate her husband, 
John, who was assigned by the FBI to infiltrate a shadow organization within the city. This organization was working on a highly classified project known as Ray Sphere. The Ray Sphere is a device designed to absorb the neuroelectrical energy of a large group of people and concentrate it into an individual. Moira had lost contact with John the night before the blast and she was becoming desperate. With this in mind, she offered us a choice. Help her locate the Ray Sphere and in exchange, she will give us our freedom from the city and clear our names for any associated crimes that were related to the blast. After making it back into the city, we relocate Zeke and start the pursuit for John. We take this opportunity and locate some collectibles in the region, specifically these shards right here. These shards, when collected, will expand Cole's ability to absorb electrical energy. And within a short time, we earn the trophy Junior Geologist for finding 25% of the total shards. After some fun sidetracking, we get back to the main story and we're asked by Moira to investigate a nearby frequency. Relocate the source of the frequency and discover it's caused by a portable audio drive connected to a satellite dish. The file on this drive is encrypted, but with the help of Moira, we're able to listen into the contents of this drive. Found the ray sphere in the blast crater next to some kids. He was dead and I didn't have time to check. I'm going to try and hole up somewhere. If anyone is even listening to these things, I need immediate extraction. It's encrypted messages between John and his handler, referring to the mission and in particular the ray sphere. Our next mission revolves around locating an electrician who's gone missing. We head to the last lone location and find a woman deceased on the ground. Upon finding her, a strange energy fluctuation occurs and when we touch her body, we are shown her last memories. Huh? And they show that the electrician we're looking for was taken by the reapers before her life was ended. An echo of the electrician is then seen leaving where we are so we followed the echo until it led to a substation taken over by the reapers after taking out all the bad guys one reaper decides to sacrifice himself and knocks out the whole power within the neon district after coordinating with Moira, she advises us that we need to head underground and reboot the power network in order to restore power to the area. Cole, being the Wish.com Electro, decides to use his powers to try and jumpstart the reactor nearby, causing electrical energy to pulsate through him, unlocking a new ability in the process. These abilities revolve around restraining, healing, and leeching off downed NPCs or enemies. Whilst down in the sewer system, we find the electrician and face another morality challenge. Choice. Tell him that his wife has been shot or threatened to put him down ourselves. So you can guess by now which one we chose. And after sharing the tragic news, the electrician gives us access to the substation and we reboot the power and restore partial power to the Neon District. Moira confirms to us that there is another three reactors that need to be booted up in order to restore full power to the Neon District. And we head to the sewer once more. As we explore this underground section, we come across another transponder. And because last time went so well for Cole, he jumps into the middle of the transponder and unlocks a new ability. I will take a moment here and say how good and functional these tutorials are. They kind of remind me of how they did it in Far Cry Blood Dragon. Great work, Sucker Punch here. We unlock our next ability. It's the ability to condense electrical energy into a small orb which can be thrown at enemies before detonating and causing a small explosion, much like a frag grenade. However, this can be stuck on enemies as well. And once we've completed this section, we restore the power to the region, making it two out of four for the Neon District. As we've unlocked a very fun and new offensive ability, I thought it was about time we took advantage of it and it wasn't long before or we popped the trophy, oh you've done this before, for sticking 50 enemies with the grenade ability. We discovered that the Reapers have been isolating and cutting off the water supply within the Neon District and throwing this black sludge in its place instead. We find out that one of the central fountains in the area has been taken over by the Reapers and is being used to disseminate the sludge to nearby by homes. As we arrived, we bump into Triss. She's pretty mad at us because she's blaming us for the passing of her sister during the explosion. We decide to try and stop the reapers spreading the sludge and we instantly regret it as we're sprayed in the Ooh. face which causes insane hallucinations. Oh, hello. As Trish helps remove the sludge from her face, she informs us that we will not be able to rely on her in future and Moira advises us to head to the next substation nearby and unlock a new power like any superhero should. This ability is a traversal ability and allows us to grind on the zip lines to speed up traversal. Upon returning to the surface, Moira sends us on a mission to save a number of civilians that are being held hostage on an abandoned train. Moira believes John could be amongst them, so with this information in tow, we destroy the 
Reaper's got on the train, jump on the lead carriage and ride the train to safety. Once we finish this mission, we earn the trophy, good train. Moira tells us of the location of the final substation in the Neon District. So you know what that means. It's power up time. We're heading to the sewers, get connected up to the transponder and this time we unlock a precision ability. And this precision ability allows us to zoom in to an area, slow down time for a brief moment like an elite sniper and take someone out with precision accuracy. After becoming familiar with this newfound ability, Moira tells us she's received information about a woman named Sasha. She was for a time a top ranking official in the First Sons and spearheaded a lot of their research division. Sasha may have information on John. However, Moira states that even if she doesn't, we need to take Sasha out. Sasha is in one of the tunnels directly links the Neon District to the Warren. Prior to facing Sasha, we earned the trophy true potential for purchasing every upgrade in a single power and drop everything for thunder dropping for a total distance of 500 meters. We head to the tunnel and begin the mission and this is one of the toughest missions we've come across so far and it actually took me a few attempts because these guns right here were a pain in my ass. So we take down the reapers, we head in and confront Sasha. Darling, what took you? Was it perfect? I told you not to take the bridge. It's always better at night. Get dressed. We have dinner plans tonight. Of course I told you. Silly man. Here we're blessed with our first boss fight in the game where we must take every lesson we've learned from every Crash Bandicoot game we've played and jump from platform to platform whilst shooting and avoiding sludge in the process. After a few phases we beat you and unlock the trophy clean up your act which is quickly followed by community organizer as we took care of all of these side missions and quests in the Neon District. Following this we find ourselves in a new region known as the Warren. We start our new mission in a new area and we have to restore the power to this region so we head into the sewer system and jump in the middle of the transponder because why the hell not and unlock a new ability this time it's kind of like a thrusting glider thing that allows us to descend slowly once we arrive at the surface we meet a new gang to run the warren these guys are called the dustmen yep seriously because they've got trash bags on Whilst on the surface, we take the opportunity to gather some collectibles and take down some enemies. And during this time, we unlock a couple of trophies. Firstly, the Red Baron for taking down 100 enemies whilst airborne. Then the trophy Stunt Coordinator for completing 10 stunts on the stunt list. And finally, Member of the Mineral Club for discovering 50% of the total shards. That's almost 200 at this point. While exploring the Warren, Trish gets in contact and asks for our help again. Trish asks us to locate a city engineer who may be able to repair the bridge that connects the Neon District to the Warren. After locating the Engineer, we must take out these two guards here within quick succession before they can hurt the hostage. Taking every lesson we've learned from all those sniper Enemy missions in Call of Duty, Duty we take out the guards and enlist the help of the Engineer to fix this bridge. We've now got full freedom between the Warren and the Neon District. Following this, we bump into this guy. He's pretty talented and asks us to shoot. Which post do we like the most? This is one of those morality decisions that affect the game and how people react to us as well so we choose the blue one here and receive the trophy good exposure whilst exploring the warren and en route to our second of four substations in this region we unlock a few trophies firstly the frequent flyer for traveling five kilometers using the thrusters ability next up we unlock electrical hobo for riding the train for two kilometers and goody two shoes for reaching the full positive karma ranking when we arrived at the substation it was time again to power up and earn a new ability. This time it's called the Mega Warhammer. It's your own personalized version of a rocket propelled grenade causing massive damage and pushing enemies back that are nearby. When we got to the surface, we unlocked the trophy ACDC for draining 750 megawatts of power in the game. After this trophy popped, we received a call from Moira. She talks about someone flying drones in the area and asks us to investigate. As we arrive to the location, 
could find one crashed nearby, and we remove the flight recorder from it. We find out that the first sons are using drones to triangulate the location of the race sphere, and after taking down three drones ourselves and uploading the data from the flight recorders to a nearby satellite, Moira reviews the contents for us. <laughs> Whilst she's doing that, we find out that the Zeke has been kidnapped by the big baddie of the area. In order to save Zeke, we must infiltrate the Dustman's base, and his mission was very different from what we've done so far and it was a bit more of a challenge because this area is a maze with loads of traps and enemies in our way. However because I'm a pro gamer with the god level status I only failed a handful of times. Anyways we managed to free Zeke from the clutches before they gave him an early retirement. We then speak to Trish who asks for our help. She needs our help defending a bus full of medical supplies and she's rigged the top of the bus with a generator and a metal mesh that will give us a constant stream of electricity. Yes, science! During this mission is actually one of the best times to get a couple of the miscellaneous trophies. So I earned the trophy roadkill for taking out 25 enemies whilst riding on the roof of a moving vehicle and also fish in a barrel for killing 50 enemies whilst blasting them and pushing them into the water. Just as we arrive to the end of this mission, we come face to face with Alden. Alden has telekinetic abilities and he's able to grab the bus that we were on and launch it in the air throwing it on top of this hospital here with Trish inside and we must fight off his army of dustmen in order to save her. Once we reach the top and save Trish we're given the trophy back with Trish. While exploring the warren I take the opportunity to earn a few more trophies. Firstly further down the rabbit hole for collecting all dead drops in the warren and get off my clown for knocking a hundred enemies off high locations and making them succumb to the full damage. The next story mission starts with us following an echo of Alden through the dustman base taking out all these bad guys along the way until we're faced with this guy this is basically the wish.com version of the golem from knack by the way has anyone played them do i need to platinum them is there any good let me know if you want to see me platinum knack and knack 2 on the channel put it in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe after taking this golem down some armored buses in the area as well we head to the prison to help with the extraction of Alden. this mission is actually one of the most memorable in the game we arrive at the prison and the dustman begin a full on assault in an attempt to free Alden. We need to use every ability in our arsenal to stop them from exceeding. And I'll admit on the hard difficulty, this took me a few attempts. After holding back the dustman in two separate locations, Alden ends up escaping, slaughtering all the guards that were trying to guard him in the process. At this point, we receive a call from John. Yes, John, the mystery man we've been searching for during this whole game, reaches out to us and asks us to meet him alone. We arrive at the location and the helicopter spooks John, so we have to run after him, chasing him across the Roran until we finally catch up with him. At this point, we're about to finally get some answers about where he's been, where the race sphere is, and everything in between, and then we're attacked by the dustmen and John disappears during the fight. John calls me up again. This time, he tells us that Moira, the agency worker, we've been working for is actually not his wife and he doesn't work for the FBI. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? He informs us that the UFEs that were shot down earlier were actually his and he used them to triangulate the location of the race sphere. The sphere is located on Alden's tower and we need to bring someone along with us to help us navigate this potentially dangerous location once more. So we enlist the help of Zeke and give him a chance of redemption. After reaching the top of the tower, we are confronted by a delusional Alden who refuses to give us the sphere. This is one of the two boss fights that you fight in the Warren and it was quite a challenge on the harder difficulty but we defeated Alden and we are rocked by one of the biggest surprises in the game. Take a look. Zeke yanked the race sphere out of its cradle and was caught between Alden and Kessler. It was definitely time to escape but he just stood there petrified. You see through the fear he realized that the key to his dreams the tool to make him super powered was right between his hands. Asshole makes the choice to kill thousands. What? What the fuck? Stealing their lives so that he'll be transformed. And then... Nothing. Everyone's fine. No change at all. Kessler's first to grasp the situation. Claims to know what's wrong. If Zeke brings him the race sphere, Kessler will be able to give Zeke the powers he craves. My best friend looks me in the eye and then makes his second mistake. Alden goes
goes ballistic at the loss of the sphere. The tower shakes and it starts to rip apart. But I was just dumbfounded. Barely felt the impact. Damn! After recovering from the shock of what we just witnessed, we pursued Alden across the bridge that connects the Warren to the third and final region in the game, the Historic District. While navigating across the bridge, we must go toe to toe with Alden and fight him again. Following this, we receive the trophy, taking out the trash once we defeat him. Upon making it to the other side, we realize that the fight between us and Alden has damaged this bridge beyond repair. So, after speaking to John, we lower the suspension bridge to the south. This gives us the game with the opportunity to return to the warren and the neon district and collect any trophies in the area that we might have missed after receiving a call from kessler we must defuse a number of bombs in the historic district before facing the ultimate karma decision kessler gives us a choice save trish or save 10 doctors which is more important the life of one or the life of many as we're a man of consistency we choose to save the doctors following this we earn the next trophy good intentions it was at this point in the game we realized the story was coming to an end so we took the opportunity and collected the remaining dead drops and obtained the trophy you're so sly and obtained the trophy Dr. Cole. Dr. Cole is a trophy that's earned once you heal a total of 250 civilians in the game. We had accumulated a vast pool of experience points that needed to be used in order to prepare us for this final area. So we obtained the trophy True Heroes for upgrading all of the positive hero abilities. One of the final story related missions involved us restoring the power to the historic district and then taking down these hot air balloons that was disseminating this poisonous gas that was transforming normal civilians into blood crazy chaotic individuals that were ripping each other apart. After taking down the balloons, we then had to, with the help of John, locate these hidden transponders that Kessler was using to mask the location of the race sphere. This mission was our last opportunity to earn and complete any of the combat related stunts that we haven't completed so far. Once we destroyed all of the transmitters, we tracked the race sphere to a harbour and this is where our final morality and karma decision came. Do we destroy the sphere so no no one can use its powers for evil or do we use the race sphere to become the ultimate god actually we have to destroy it in this playthrough so we unlock the trophy good sphere and receive this cutscene Trish's crumbled body flashes through my head i think of Amy, oh, playtime or seek and i hit that sphere with everything i've got when something goes wrong the race sphere cracks open creating a vortex of energy john's pulled in and it tears him apart. And I run. John and the race sphere are gone. Reduced to ashes. Nothing went according to plan. But at least the race sphere is out of the picture. Jesus Christ! Now the time has come. The finale, final battle between you and Kessler. This fight is the hardest moment in the game in my opinion and during my evil playthrough it took me over 20 attempts to beat him so if you're gonna attempt this game and the platinum yourself good luck. Once we take down Kessler we witness this incredibly nuts cutscene and receive the trophy good finish for beating the game with a positive hero ranking and receive this cutscene. Last was a picture from his wedding day when he married Trish with Zeke as his best man. My brain lurched, unable to accept that Kessler and I were the same person, that he'd come back in time to mold me into the savior he failed to be, going so far as to kill the woman he loved, I loved, so that I wouldn't be tied down by emotions. No, Kessler wanted me strong ruthless so that when I faced the beast I'd be capable of making impossible decisions all for the common good and then Kessler fell back dead his final message my final message burned into my brain I take one last look down at myself my future self and turn away the rage curdling inside I hate everything about Kessler, but when the time comes, I will be ready.
At this point what in the, the game, fuck? I had 19 trophies remaining. 11 related to the evil playthrough, 2 related to collectibles, and 5 miscellaneous ones. So before I booted up a new game and pursued that Dark Urge playthrough, I wanted to make sure I got as many as possible that weren't related to the Dark Urge. At this time, I earned the trophy Hotfoot for traveling 25 kilometers whilst riding the train rail. The next one I earned was Civic Leader for completing all the side quests in the Warren and then became the Grind. The next trophy I pursued and eventually earned after several hours was called Rock Hound. Yes! Rock Hound, baby! And this involved collecting all 100% of the shards in the game. However, there are 350 shards. So, I downloaded a map with the location of every shard in every location and manually ticked them off. This took me about four hours, and believe me, once it was done, I was so ready to complete the Dark Urge playthrough. To try and prevent a third playthrough, I decided that the Evil playthrough was the best time to tackle the difficulty related trophy, as many skills in the Evil Arsenal help you recover health quicker. With this strategy in mind, we began the journey. We earned the trophy Evil Treats for choosing to keep the foods for ourselves in the Neon District. We earned the trophy Evil Riot for inciting a riot at the bridge. We earned the trophy Evil Train for having an Evil Karma score when we can completed the train mission in the Neon District, we chose the red poster here to incite fear amongst the people. This earned us the trophy Evil Exposure. And we also earned the trophy Confirmed Bachelor when we completed the hospital mission because Trish hated us at this point. The next trophy we earned was Evil Intentions as we chose to save Triss over the doctors. Finally, the last evil related trophy was Evil Sphere where we used the race sphere to become the most powerful evil version of ourselves. Now prior to our new improved rematch time with Kessler, we decided to take through a few moments and earn some of the remaining trophies. Firstly, truly infamous for earning the maximum negative karma score. The next one we completed was Stunt Master for completing all the combat related stunts and Casey Jones for taking down 25 enemies whilst riding a moving train. Now it's time to take on Kessler. We marched into battle and lost over and over and over again. Yeah, this took me so long to complete. Anyways, after about 20 plus attempts, Kessler was beaten, the credits rolled, and swiftly after that, we earned the trophies, evil finish and hard finish for beating the game in an evil playthrough and beating it on the hardest difficulty and received this cutscene. Because of me, Empire City is a wasteland. I've taken this place down notch by notch and it's never getting up again. Kessler thought he was preparing me to face some beast. But I'd be using my powers for the greater good. What an idiot. These powers are only good for one thing. Letting me take what I want, when I want. In a place with no law, the strong take what they want, and the weak are their slaves, their playthings. And no one is stronger than me. Now, we're left with three remaining trophies. Urban Designer, Evil to the Core, and the infamous Platinum Trophy. Originally, I'd planned on getting the first two on my hard playthrough, however, I had a bit of a problem. The last side quest in the Historic District was not popping, regardless of how long I waited, and I needed a seriously large amount of points in order to get the final two upgrades during my Evil playthrough. So I was left with two options. One, I keep running around reviving civilians and shooting bad guys for a maximum of two to five XP. Bear mind I needed about 5,000 to get this upgrade. Or start a third playthrough where I do everything properly and follow a guide and only upgrade the relevant abilities. So naturally we did the third playthrough because I ain't got time for this. We powered through and sped through this game. And once we hit the historic district, we earned the trophy Evil to the Core for getting all the upgrades for the evil abilities and then completed all the side quests in the historic district for earning us the trophy Urban Designer. And once we earned that trophy, we earned the infamous Platinum Trophy. Infamous Platinum! Yes! Thank you so much for watching. I had a blast playing this game for the first time. I'm excited to say I will be earning the Platinum for the other games as well, including Infamous 2, First Light, Second Sun, and Festival of Blood as well. If you enjoyed what you saw, don't forget to subscribe to be notified when new videos go live. Comment on your favorite Infamous game, as well as any other games you'd like to see me Platinum on the channel. And come join us over on Twitch on Wednesdays and Sundays from 10pm UK time to see these Platinum Trophy journeys live in action.